In this video, we're taking on Florida's illegal seafood. This person that did this, the culprit, what happened to them? They lost their boat and all their traps. Then we'll see what happens when you steam 400 pounds of lobster all at once. Have you ever seen 200 lobsters die at the same time? I just did. But first, let's back up. Our East Coast cross-country seafood journey started with lobster in Maine, just a few miles from the Canadian border. Oh my god! <laughs> She's very close to being oversized. Oh, I like that. Now, we've worked our way south, all the way down to the Florida Keys. Jeez, dolphins! There's like three dolphins behind you, that looks awesome! The Sunshine State is heaven for seafood lovers, from swordfish to mahi-mahi and everything in between. But today, we're after one of this state's most highly regulated underwater dwellers. If you take the whole body onto land, that is a criminal offense. That is illegal. That is something you cannot do. That's correct. Along the way, we'll settle the debate of which is truly superior between the Maine lobster and the Florida lobster with my friend Guga. There's no comparison. It's, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, you're triggering me. It all starts bright and early on the water. It's a beautiful morning. I gotta say, it's f***ing miserable out here. <laughs> Right now, we're heading out to the trapping area. It's a couple hours off the coast. It's pretty choppy out here. My camera guys are about to puke at any second. It's a little uh, sporty sometimes. That's a more positive way to spin it. Meet Paul, a seasoned 25-year commercial fisherman. He heads out to sea with his crew throughout the year, and they catch whatever's in season, ranging from spearfish and spiny lobster to the much-awaited stone crab. What is the season for stone crab? Because that's why we're here. From October 15th till May 1st. So, oh wow, there's like three dolphins behind you. <laughs> that looks awesome. I'd take videos all the time for my kids. You know, seamen back in the past, they saw dolphins and they thought they were hot mermaids. <laughs> you ever think a dolphin's a hot mermaid? Uh, no. The Florida stone crab, able to grow up to six inches wide, can be found in the western North Atlantic, including the USA's east coast. These crabs primarily feed on oysters, mollusks, and a range of crustaceans. What's really unique about the stone crab is the fact that if you take the whole body onto land, that is a criminal offense. That's correct. We can only harvest the claws. Let's pull up some crabs and see how it works. Sounds good. Regulations have been implemented to safeguard the stone crab population, ensuring that this valuable marine life can continue sustainably for future generations. First trap is up. He pops it open. Let's see what's inside. It looks pretty good. All right, three crabs. Those crabs go in the bin here. There you go. Oh, this one only has one claw. Either somebody harvested him or he lost it in a fight with another crab. And we measure them. They have to be two and seven eighths inches long. Or more? Or more. Yeah. Okay. And then you're gonna crack them right here. Wow. And then we release the crab alive back to the wild. As long as they're big enough, the males, we take all the claws. Yes. For females, it's highly illegal to remove their claws if they're bearing eggs. The females have a wider piece right here compared to a male. When resetting the traps back into the ocean, an enticing bait is essential. But instead of oysters or crustaceans, they opt for an unconventional choice. Pig seed. It's one of the most sustainable baits that we can get. People in Vietnam are horrified right now that you're feeding the pig's feet to crabs. Actually, with these pig's feet, it's only the hind feet. Oh, is that right? The front feet get processed and do get shipped overseas. On a good day, Paul and his crew can collect up to 600 pounds of stone crab claws, amounting to roughly 2,500 pieces. Does PETA care about this? Are people upset that you're breaking the arms off? Like a humane way? Yeah, are people mad you're not giving them anesthesia first? I'm sure there's somebody out there, but... There's always somebody. Yeah. Like many crustaceans, stone crabs have a remarkable ability to regenerate their claws. This regrowth can take anywhere from one to three years. I think we're in luck. Oh my God, that's huge. To once again reach a legally harvestable size. Like this big. However, this regeneration is only possible if the claws are removed correctly. Okay, let me do this. A flawed removal can fatally wound the crab, causing it to bleed to death. I know you're mad, but soon you're gonna be mad and also not have arms. Measure them first. Oh. I almost broke the law. Because I don't think he makes it. Oh my god, no. No. First of all, let's check if it's a boy or a girl. This is a boy. We're gonna measure that one. If it touches, it's legal. These are both legal. Those are both legal to take. And then I just twist? Twist so, down and If pop. I do it wrong, am I gonna rip it in half? You could, yeah. Oh! You did it. I got it, I'm sorry. Got it? There Good. you go. You look ridiculous. At least he can go back and reproduce. That'll be for the next generation of crabs. Now, but here's the thing. If I was a lady crab, I'm not going to reproduce with a dude with no claws. He's going to have to work a little harder at it. Throw like him that? right into the water. There you go. 
It's quite common for a crab to lose and regenerate a claw or two throughout its lifetime. Yet this loss can significantly impact a crab's odds of survival. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, a crab with two claws removed had a 46 to 82 percent mortality rate, while a crab with its claws intact only had a 12 percent likelihood of dying. No doubt this is a challenging job. You got to get up early. You come out here and the swells and the waves is choppy. My camera guy threw up already. Here's some footage of that. This is probably the most expensive seafood you can find in Florida. Why is it so expensive? It's a lot of work to get out here. You got to see we got to battle the elements, long hours, the gear's expensive. It's a labor of love to have to come out here to do it. Back in the 1890s, these stone crabs were considered merely incidental bycatch in traps meant for spiny lobsters. But by the late 20th century, the stone crab fishery had evolved into one of Florida's most lucrative industries, valued at $30 million. Ahoy! Huh. From the docks, we're headed to a seafood processing facility where we'll soon see 400 pounds of live Florida lobster get steamed all at once. Are they alive when they go in? Yeah, but not for long. This place is crucial to the journey of the stone crab claws going from sea to plate. Jason? Hi, Sonny. This place is amazing. You ever get a Make-A-Wish kid coming through here? No, we have not. They are not making good choices. <laughs> I think uh, they're not all there. The moment the boat docks, the stone crab claws are weighed then whisked away to here. Have you ever heard of somebody bringing a whole crab body onto land and getting in trouble for that? I certainly have. What happened? At BSC Fisheries, they have their stone crab claws sorted into four distinct sizes then sent off to a giant steamer. If you get caught doing that, you can lose your boat, you can lose your licenses, you can lose all your traps. And were they ever allowed to go fish again? And once that happens, you usually receive a lifetime ban. And then where do you move? Because here's the thing, in the USA, once you're a convict or a criminal, you move to Florida. Unfortunately, if you make that mistake. If you're already in Florida, you become a criminal. Where the hell do you go? I guess you gotta find a new home. Arizona. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> The entire process is designed to be swift, ensuring the meat doesn't spoil. Once steamed, the claws are rapidly transferred to another container, where they're buried in ice to halt the cooking process. In a week, how many pounds of just crab claws do you think you have coming through here? 15 to 20,000 pounds. But before they're sent out to local restaurants and wholesalers across Florida, they must be sorted by grade. Let's go through this size category. The smallest is? Medium. We don't have a small. No small. It's like movie theater popcorn. Correct. And we have large, and we have jumbo, and colossal. Something like this in a restaurant. Any idea how much that would cost? Anywhere from the range of about $65 up to $90, depending on the place. That is mind blowing. You better bring your checkbook. Yeah, no kidding. You will not be disappointed, though. Fortunately, our next stop features a deal not to be missed, an all-you-can-eat stone crab claw feast for $120. And the best part? My friend Guga will be there to share in the experience. Thanks for having me, Sonny. But before that, I'm setting out to sample another seafood delight that Florida is famous for. You guys also specialize in other types of seafood. I'm very interested in the spiny lobster because we started this journey in Maine with the Maine lobster. It was big, beautiful, red, it has claws. Spiny lobsters rank as the second biggest commercial fishery in Florida and they're protected by law in the USA to help maintain their population. I need to also try the spiny lobster and judge for myself which I think is the superior lobster. You'll be the judge of that. Would it be okay to steam like 400 pounds worth? I think we can make that happen. Similar to the stone crab claws, this vat of hundreds of spiny lobsters will soon face the same fate, plunging into brutal steamy temperatures, cooking their meat, and transforming their shells into a bright orange hue. After a thorough steaming, they need to stop the cooking process, so they cold chalk it in ice water. That's gonna stop the meat from cooking. They're beautiful, they're orange, they're radiant, they're bright, they're beautiful. I said beautiful twice, and I meant it each time. Step one, give it a little chiropractic treatment. Oh, oh my lord, there's so much goo and stuff in there. That's how you know it's fresh. There's some green tamale right here on the edge. I wanna get this whole tail out of here. That's why I have a knife. Don't cut your hand, don't go to the hospital. Don't go to the hospital. Every time I go to the USA, I go to the hospital. Last time I shot myself in the head, dude. I got jacked up. Boom, there we go. Oh, and look at that, automatically deveined. If someone tells you that it does something special, you know, fertility, it's an aphrodisiac, don't believe them. I need that. I did a pretty bang up job. I got my whole thing right here. I'm gonna go from the back and try it out. Here we go. The temperature really affects the texture and the flavor to me. So with it being colder, it feels a little bit more dense, slightly more chewy. 
In general, I prefer a warmed up lobster, but this is still very nice. It's juicy, it's sweet, it's succulent. It's got a strong bite to it. I mean, who doesn't like lobster? It's good, but the question isn't about is it good? The question is, which is better between this and a main lobster? And I'm gonna tell you soon when I meet up with my good friend Guga at Billy's Stone Crab. With some of the biggest, freshest crab claws plucked straight from the ocean floor this morning, we're headed to the best seafood spot in the Sunshine State. Soon, we'll bite into a colossal and find out if these claws are worth all the hype. Put it there, how you doing? Pleasure, Carlos. The menu features a range of the seafood Florida is known for, but their best seller, the item 75% of patrons are after, the reigning champion of the deep, the stone crab. How much stone crab do you think you go through in a week? Man, uh, thousands of pounds. But it's a pricey item. I mean, this is something you gotta save your allowance for weeks. Put it on the American Express card. The, you could do that. You could go into debt. Americans do love that. The average person, how many are they ordering? Are they getting one claw only? Are they getting a plate of claws? A lot of people get the all you can eat. How much is all you can eat? $120 per person for medium. That's incredible. Now let's talk about what I'm gonna be trying out tonight. Mm -hmm. The seafood tower. Coming in at more money than $120. How much is the seafood tower? 550. And what does it include? You'll get a dozen oysters. You get jumbo lump crab meat, our beautiful colossal stone crabs or jumbo, the Florida lobster tail, and then King crab, steamed right on top. This sounds amazing. I'm very excited. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, man. The seafood tower arrives as a three-tiered man-made marvel. On the first layer, a dozen raw oysters, elegantly nestled on a chilly bed of ice and kale, with a central bowl brimming with jumbo lump crab meat. Their second tier showcases today's highlight. Six colossal-sized stone crab claws. Adjacent to the centerpiece, four spiny lobster tails. And finally, crowning the third tier, four robust king crab legs. Such a feast isn't meant for one. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Michael, you've been here for a bit. How long you been here? 20 years. And how long has the restaurant been here? It's around 46. That's a pretty good chunk of time. Guga, you're here. It's a pleasure to dine with you. Thanks for having me. On camera. <laughs> Guga is a maestro of meats and the host of Guga Foods and Sous Vide Everything. The man knows beef like the back of his hand, but what about seafood? My very first video on YouTube on Guga Foods was actually about lobster, spiny lobster to be specific. I tried that earlier today, we'll talk about that soon. Sure. This is the end of a long series. We started in Maine, about an hour from Canada, all the way down the East Coast, trying out different seafoods that this beautiful country has to offer. And it's ending here in Florida, which some might consider to be the seafood capital of the USA. 100%. What comes to mind when you think seafood in Florida? Well, one of the main things that come to mind, of course, is stone crabs. They're a delicacy that's only in season seven months a year. I hate to say it like this, but it's like a drug. Good kind of drug. One thing I was told coming to Florida is that if I'm gonna try seafood, I have to try grouper. That's what's in front of us right now. Yes. Black groupers are commonly found in the Gulf of Mexico and South Atlantic Ocean. They must be at least 22 inches to land, but they can reach up to 52 inches and a whopping 180 pounds. It is my favorite fish, by the way. Next to hogfish. Ever had hogfish? I've never had hogfish. What? Never. Oh my God. That's a good one, huh? We don't get it often, but when yeah. we get it, it sells right away. I gotta try hogfish, but let's try this crappy grouper first. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. First, sprinkle salt and pepper on the butter-soaked grouper filet. It sizzles as it hits the pan with hot oil. Deglaze the filet with white wine, adding more butter and thyme. Then give it a moment alone in the oven. Lay the fish atop a generous mound of jumbo lump crab meat. Crown it with jumbo shrimp and a few slices of avocado. Drizzle the creation with beurre blanc, a rich blend of white wine, lemon, and butter. And finish with a sprinkle of microgreens. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. That is delicious, everybody. That's really good. It's got a nice bite to it. It's flaky, but it doesn't just fall apart into nothing. It's a thick, flaky fish. Mm -hmm. This is cooked beautifully, and the fish, the ingredient itself to begin with, is magnificent. It's got bite to it. And it's light. Mm -hmm. So this isn't a cow, <laughs> and that's okay. Maybe it's the cow of the sea, Sonny. By the way, I saw one of those. I saw a manatee today. I wanted to jump on its back so badly. No, Sonny, you cannot do that. It's I illegal. don't hope that anymore. Sorry about good. that. Yeah, we don't want to do that, everybody. You get in big trouble. This, undoubtedly, excellent. But I've not had grouper yet on my trip. This is my first grouper. I have nothing to compare it to. So far on this trip, I've had two lobsters. I had Maine lobster and this spiny lobster here in Florida. Now for me, unequivocally, I would have to say, I love the Maine lobster. Why? One of the best parts of a Maine lobster are the claws. The claws are soft, succulent, and juicy. They're even softer than the tail meat. They're perfect for a lobster roll. Spiny lobster, where are the claws? The reason you like the claw is because the tail of the main lobster is not good. That's the opposite from the Florida lobster, which the tails is better. And also, it's sometimes it's way too sweet on the main lobster. It's, oh my God. I've never heard someone call seafood too sweet. Uh, Michael, tiebreaker. Honestly, I like the Florida lobster. I love the taste of Florida lobster. The guy that don't like seafood saying that you don't like Florida lobster. 
Right here, we have some chilled stone crab claws. Now, I have been working hard all day. Damn! Get to this moment right here, please, my friend. Did you catch this yourself? It's been a long day. Let me tell you, I woke up at 5 a.m. I was on a boat, somebody on my team threw up. Just loaded to that again. He's right behind me. <laughs> that must have been a lot of fun. Should we start with knuckle? I mean, I always start with the knuckle. Where's the mustard? This is the mustard sauce. Mustard. That's our famous mustard. No bro. butter, no mayonnaise, mustard. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. It's delicious, huh, gentlemen? Mm. Wow, it took my breath away. That is amazing. I can't believe you caught it. These boys were swimming yesterday. These were alive. Wait, they're still alive. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yes, they are That's still alive. That's what I learned today. So are you <laughs> telling me that this is the only animal you can eat it twice? Potentially for decades. Three years later, the claws, they could get this big again. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. 100%. Now listen, mustard, that was nice. The meat itself, it's got a nice firmness to it, a yeah. wonderful texture, a great bite. Slightly sweet. Slightly yes. sweet, but not too sweet for Guga here. So we tried the mustard. I say... I say we dunk in the butter, son. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, brother. I know sometimes life can be tough. <laughs> the butter's so good. Undeniable. <laughs> Everything's better with butter. Absolutely. Reflecting back on this trip so far, I've learned a lot. I'm from Minnesota. We have a red lobster. Then. <laughs> this trip, I've learned so much about different regions and these beautiful pockets of America up and down the East Coast. I have two major takeaways. One is that fishermen, work their asses off. Yeah. They're, they're diligent, they put in a hard day's work, and they do it again and again and again. It's hard work too. It's hard work. Doesn't matter if it's a good day, if it's a bad day, they're always there to get their catch. And sometimes you get lucky, mm -hmm. and other times you don't. Right. And they don't have control over the market or what they're gonna get paid that day, that month, or that yep. year. I'm very impressed with the fishermen, but also with the chefs who choose to take on the challenge of serving seafood to their customers. You gotta get the freshest seafood possible, and it has a very narrow shelf life, especially if you're looking at stuff like Maine lobster. It's not gonna be there forever, and they need that to be alive, even if it gets to Minnesota or gets to China. Sonny, out of the entire trip, which one was your favorite? Oh, which seafood? Yes, sir. We wanna know. What stood out the most? It's the Florida lobster, but just tell me. <laughs> I think a once in a lifetime experience when I was in Maryland. I had soft shell crab for the first time. It had just shed its shell the night before. We put the whole thing in a skillet. It was like a sausage stuffed with crab meat. It was amazing. Whoa. For me, I don't think I can replicate that. But it's still not better than the Florida lobster. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country. Can you, do you have your knuckle? How do I get the knuckle out? Oh, there you go. I'm trying to steal my knuckle, man. So sorry about that. Come on, man. Come on, man. And how many of these am I gonna need to fill me up? Two of these give you about a pound in general. So that might be enough. You do a couple appetizers, you're gonna have a nice meal. I want this also for the appetizer, though. So that means in seven months, you have to catch enough crab for the whole year. Yes. Um. Yeah, that's a yes or no question. I need to work on my open-ended question. There's another Hollywood. Hollywood LA. I think this one's the best one, though. It is. Less homeless people, that's for sure. <laughs> Do they ever scream? They will shoot water at you. Oh, okay. Well, that's about all they got. Boom! Guys, that is the end of video number six in the USA. The seafood tour is complete. We went all the way from basically Canada to basically almost Cuba. <laughs> Pretty close. Huge thank you to Guga for coming and hanging out with me tonight for this meal. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me, brother. You can find Guga at Guga Foods, at Guga, and at Sous Vide Everything. Three different channels. There's so much stuff, so much food, so much entertainment for you to see with my man Guga. Go check it out. Thank you, Sonny. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. All right, should we go outside? We can jump off the pier here. I think here. so. We're Let's like go. on the ocean Let's right now. Let's eat some go more catch lobster. Some. Yes, on the ocean or the floor. lobster to be specific. No, it's okay to nah, be different. You're yeah. wrong. No, you're right.